All right, we're going to continue looking at the Handel Sonata number four in D major. This is the first movement, the slower uh, of the two that we're working on. Last time we made it, uh, it looks like a lot, but it's only measures one through 11. Um, but today we're going to try to finish up the rest of the movement, so from measure 12 until the end. So um, when we left off, uh, I guess we actually, yeah, when we, we played through uh, measure 10 because 11 is a measure of rest. But when we left off in measure 10, we were in third position. Going back to measure 12 now, we're going to be back to first position. So um, again, I'm marking it in, and you can be, should be marking it in at home too. So that way you have all of these markings in your music. Remember, this is so slow that our beat that we're counting is the eighth note. So from measure 12, we have a rest, and then one, high three, because it's a C sharp, one, and then we're going to go up to third position for three. So go ahead and mark that. That B is three fingers in third position. This is similar to the beginning, just in a different key, right? The beginning was, and now we're doing, and that. Uh, B is a half note tied to an eighth note. The eighth note is our beat, so it's going to be five beats that we're holding it for. Uh, go ahead and mark that after that B, we go back to first position again. So we are really only in first or in third position for that one. No, I'm just going to move that a little closer here. I'm going to mark through a little bit more and then, and then play some because a lot of this is simple, um, just doing some basic shifts back and forth. So then we're going to play one open, then two fingers for C sharp, and then it says three over that F sharp. That's back to third position. Three, two, one. You see they mark the one, and then after that, that C sharp is back to first position. It says two fingers. So um, I'm going to play from measure 12 all the way. It looks like a lot again, but it's really only a little bit through measure 14. So it's going to sound like this. Up to third. One, two, three, four, five. Back to first. Then up to third. Back to first. So you, there's a lot of going back and forth, but again, it's shifts that we have done before that we've practiced doing, so they should feel pretty comfortable. Remember this, since it's in the key of D major, when you are in third position um, on the A string or the E string, we're having our 3-4 pattern that we do a lot of time practicing in our two octave D major scales. After that, um, this is a challenging thing, but I absolutely know that everyone who's doing this solo can handle this. If you look at the next note, the G sharp, they want you to play that with four fingers. That's going to be third position, but that's a stretched or, uh, stretched fourth finger. So I just got done saying that this should be your finger pattern. Now you're going to have to stretch to get G sharp. And you only go up for that one note. So you play G sharp for three beats because it's a quarter note with an eighth note. And then back to first position. And up to third. So let's mark that. We went up for the G sharp to third. Back to first position for the B. Then into measure 15, we play the first two notes in first and then right up to third for that E. And we stay in third for actually a uh, quite some time for this piece. Normally we're doing a lot of shifting. We don't go back until the very, very end of measure 16. So you can see that they've marked, um, they have a one, two in parentheses. That's an alternate fingering, but I would go and follow the three fingers and go back to first. Okay. We're going to move a little bit more. Um, if you go into measure 17, um, um, we have several notes in first, but then there's two fingers over that E. That is also in third, and you're going to stay in third until, well, we'll deal with the, actually, measure 18 in a minute. Let me just make sure that you can see what I've written so far, just to make sure you have it. Oops, is that on there? Okay, so... I'm going to go from um, that G sharp, so it's in measure 14, I'm going 1, 2, 3, stretch to 4, so it'll be 1, 2, 3, back to 1st, C sharp, now up to 3rd, and C 
stay in third. Back to first. Now up to third. That's the end of measure 17. Uh, something that might be tough is in that 15, 16 range, there's a lot of third position where you're crossing strings. So you might need to go through and mark some finger numbers if you're having a hard time remembering uh, which finger is which in third position. I know that is tough. Um, in measure 18, we go back to first position, but just for one note. So we go back to first for that F sharp, and then immediately shift back up to third for a C sharp. Um, by the way, there are a few little accidentals in here. You probably have noticed already in this section, there's several already that we've covered. So making sure that if you see an accidental, it's outside of our usual finger pattern, and you might need to figure out, if in most cases, it's, it's a sharp. Um, so you figure out which finger you need to move higher to make that note sharp. So we just marked that third position at the beginning of 18. You're gonna stay in third position all the way uh, until measure 19, the third note. It says uh, three fingers over a D natural, that's back to first. Um, and then at the end of that measure, there's a few different ways uh, that you can do that. You can either stay in first or you can see underneath those last three notes of measure 19, they've marked a harmonic and then four, three in third position. Um, that's the way I learned it was with the harmonic. However, um, it would obviously be easier to stay in first position. So if you're feeling already a little overwhelmed with some of the shifting, I would say just stay in first. It's completely up to you. It, they give you both options. So it's a choice that you can make. Um, so I might, you might see me sometimes play it with the harmonic, but it is perfectly okay to stay in first. And I would say for right now, let's plan to stay in first. Um, and that means we're actually going to stay in first all the way in, into measure 21. Um, the fourth note, you can see that the D would mark as one finger. That is third position. So the nice thing about this piece is there's not quite as much second, although there is some coming up, but it's mostly first and third, which should be, uh, we should be pretty comfortable with at this point. Um, so up to third there. And then you can see at the beginning of measure 21, there's a C-sharp with a 1 over it. We've done this uh, in other pieces where you just extend back your first finger. You're in third, that's a D. And if you just extend your first finger back, that plays the note C-sharp. It's easier than completely shifting, playing in a different, with a different note. So that's just an extension back. Um, that's at the beginning of measure 22. It's kind of silly. You can see they have you do it with one finger and then open A, and then they have you do it with two fingers and then shift to third position. So to me, that is silly. I would cross out the two fingers on the third note there and have it be one. So it's going to be one, open, one, two. And you can do that all basically in third position, but with the extension back. Hopefully that makes sense. So you stay in third um, for a little while there, and then... We're actually going to deal with measure 23 in a minute. So we'll, we'll uh, play a little bit and deal with measure 23 in a second. So here is measure 18. I'm starting in first position. Then third. Stay in third. Now back to first. get to stay in first. second here and talk about measure 23. We're almost done. Um, hopefully you can see there, even though that some of these rhythms look weird, they keep coming back. So as you start to get into your ear what they sound like, hopefully it becomes a little bit easier uh, to play some of these strange rhythms. Um, so we are in measure uh, 23 at the beginning. 
it's D, C sharp, D. So again, we've talked about this already, where you could go from D and then extend back to one. They don't want you to go one, 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 because that can sound kind of slidey and sloppy. So what they're asking you to do is one, one, two. So then you're technically in second position, but not, it's not even enough to mark it. It's not even worth marking it because right after that, you put your first finger back on the D and go one, four. I know it says one, three, but you can see underneath they, you know what, I just, I have to take back what I said a minute ago. If you look underneath at the bottom of measure 23, um, those first three notes, they actually did say you could do one, one, one. So I'm gonna leave that up to you. Um, I might in a minute when I play it, try one, one, one. I think as long as you can do it without being uh, too slidey, then that's okay. Um, so you're gonna deal with the D, C sharp, D, however you'd like to do that. And then uh, it says mezzo piano under that next eighth note. It'll be one, four, do the four, not the three fingers that's written on top. That's silly to do three fingers. So it'll be one, four, three, two, three, two, one, and then back to first. So mark that C sharp. They've given you an option to stay up there, but I would go right back to first on that C sharp. Okay, then the ending. G, F sharp, E. There's a trill, it goes to F sharp. Then you're gonna go to third, two. It's a G sharp, so it's close to your first finger. Three, harmonic. Okay, so mark that as third position, and then you just have to remember that harmonic in there. So it'll sound like this. Okay. Staying in third, two, three, four. And I would go back to first and do two, three, three. I don't know why it says two, two um, uh, for the last notes, but it makes so much more sense to go. So cross out that second finger on the A at the end there and put three fingers. Um, I would say that is absolutely a reasonable edit. Every once in a while, we'll change something that it says because it just doesn't necessarily make sense. And to me, this is easier to do two, three, three. Okay. So let me play from measure 12 to the end. Um, would, I would continue to encourage you to listen to this piece over and over again. Several years ago, I had a student who played this, and she would, during, uh, in the morning when she was getting ready for school, she would listen to this on YouTube, and she said it just helped her so much with knowing how it was supposed to sound, because these are rhythms that we don't see often, and so um, it was really helpful to, in her head, have heard someone performing it, make sure that you find someone who is a professional, you can kind of tell when you see the YouTube video based on where the performance is and, uh, you know, try to find an adult playing it um, so that you know it's correct. Not that there aren't kids who are doing it correct, but if you find an adult and it looks like it's at a professional uh, performance, that would be best. And listen to them do this over and over again uh, so you can have it in the back of your head what it's supposed to sound like when you play it. So here's uh, measure 12 to the end. Starting in first.
Okay, so that's all of the notes for that movement. Um, the only other thing that we have not talked about that will be easier to take care of in person um, is all of the musicality stuff. So there are, there's a lot of dynamic contrast through this. You'll probably notice as you're playing, uh, there's a section that's forte and then all, all of a sudden it's piano and then it crescendos. And so um, we really want to play this musically, but we're spending some time now working on the notes and then when we meet in person, it'll be easier to, to take care of some of that person. Uh, some of that musicality stuff. So that's it for the first movement. I'm actually going to go make a lesson for the second movement because there's going to be probably three or four videos for that one because it's a little bit longer. Uh, but keep working hard on this and uh, try to spend some time equally because both are important and they both have their own challenges. So I'll see you in a bit with the second, uh, second video for the second movement.